Good morning, everyone. I want to thank each of you for joining us today. I'd also like to thank all of our speakers today for providing information on Thanksgiving and the coming travel season. As you know, Thanksgiving is the busiest time of the year for travel, and MassDOT, unlike other years, has more information and more tools available to members of the traveling public. Joining us today to talk about MassDOT's ongoing efforts to update the public with real-time travel information is Secretary of Transportation, Stephanie Pollard. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. I'm pleased to be here today and, uh, and to be joined by Jeff Larson with the uh, Office of Public Safety, Colonel McKeon from the Massachusetts State Police, and Jody Ray and Todd Johnson from the MBTA. Uh, so obviously, Thanksgiving is Thursday. Uh, I think that's a news flash. Um, and uh, we're expecting a lot of travel this year. Uh, there's always a lot of travel, but the forecast seems to be that a lot, um, a lot of people are going to be taking to the roads uh, and the rails and the skies to uh, do their Thanksgiving traveling. Um, and we know that it's going to be a very busy travel week uh, today. Uh, based on history, it's actually probably the biggest single traveling day on our roads and one of the biggest travel days at the airport. Um, so, uh, you know, our message for the morning is, is that folks prayer, uh, get ready for Thanksgiving, you know, doing their shopping and doing their cooking. Um, we encourage them to also prepare by using the many travel services that are available, thinking ahead about what day to leave, what time to leave, what route to take, um, whether mass transit is an option for you. Um, one of the good news for Thanksgiving travelers is that there are more ways than ever before to find out real-time information about where the traffic congestion is and what routes folks might want to take. Um, Mass 511 has a website, www.mass511.com, and on that website you, you can get uh, traffic information, uh, and route information. You can also call 511 if you're not a computer user. You can also go on the Mass Department of Transportation website and on that website we have traffic cameras for folks. There are obviously a lot of apps out there. Uh, Waze is one real-time travel application that MassDOT has a collaborative arrangement with. So we give them all the information we have and they give us the information that uh, they have and that will help people uh, navigate traffic. Um, as you can see uh, behind me, our um, go time, real time travel information system is up and running. So as people are driving on our roadways, um, they will be seeing in real time uh, the time uh, that it will take them to get to certain points ahead of them on it. So um, with all that information out there, we strongly encourage people who can to think about gathering that information and making adjustments to their travel plans. Uh, as necessary to try to avoid the worst times, the worst days, and the worst uh, traffic uh, congestion. A uh, couple other things that are worth noting. Um, historically, MassDOT has shut down all our road construction projects as of about 5 o'clock uh, in the morning tomorrow, Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving, and we don't restart until Monday so that we don't have construction related delays. We are monitoring all of our construction sites today and into the evening, and if it is necessary to shut some down early, we will do that, but otherwise they will all be shut down by 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. Now, I would have hoped that we could get through a Thanksgiving press conference without talking about winter weather conditions, but given that we had a pretty significant storm in western Massachusetts already, and measurable snowfall in five of our six highway districts during that first storm of the winter of 2016 and 17. I do want to say that we are monitoring weather conditions. There is a possibility of certainly some freezing and possibly wet weather Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Uh, we will make sure that the roads are in good shape. We will have our crews out there. Um, if there is a need for crews out there and, and you see uh, trucks that are putting down sand or brine, trucks that are plowing if it gets that serious, obviously you can help us, the traveling public can help us by giving us the room to do that. Um, another big change for this year is that it will of course be the first year with no toll plazas uh, on Massachusetts Turnpike because of the institution of all electronic tolling. 
We encourage everyone who's using the Mass Pike, and it is a very heavily traveled road in the days leading up to Thanksgiving, to just follow the signs, follow the instructions. You do need to slow down a little bit as you go through the areas where the interchanges were, uh, but you don't need to slow all the way down to 15 miles an hour anymore, and you certainly don't need to stop. Um, if you don't have an easy pass transponder, there's still time to get one. You can walk into uh, not only our easy pass centers, but you can walk into a registry of motor vehicles office, a AAA office, and they can help you get one too. But also know if you don't have a transponder, you're not a regular user, and you're using it for Thanksgiving, when you get a bill uh, that will charge you based on your license plate, if you want to convert to a transponder, we will credit you the difference um, when you get that bill. So. People don't have transponders and aren't going to have time to get it. You will still have an opportunity once you get your bill. We're seeing about 81% of all the transactions that have been recorded, and that's about 31 million since we turned on all electronic tolling. About 81% of those are folks with transponders. We're trying to push that up to 85% uh, on on, uh, on something like Thanksgiving travel, where you have fewer regular travels that may be lower, but but we are confident that the system will work well and we are hopeful that the absence of toll booths will keep traffic flowing better than it has historically. Uh, my colleague Tom Glynn at Mass 4 was unable to join us this morning, so I just want to uh, close by talking a little bit about holiday travel at Logan Airport. Uh, close to one million uh, passengers will travel through Logan Airport during the Thanksgiving holiday. Today and tomorrow will be busy days before. Sunday and Monday will be busiest days to fly after. Uh, Logan staff are prepared to help those volumes of passengers safely get to and from the airport. Folks may want to think about getting uh, there two hours early for a domestic flight, three hours early for an international flight. Uh, definitely you're going to want to check parking conditions if you are planning to uh, drive to the airport. If you're picking up family or friends who are coming into the airport, uh, you, you can't hang out at the curb waiting for folks. Uh, there is a cell phone lot at Logan, and we encourage folks to go wait in the cell phone lot. And when you get a call from the person you're meeting, then you can go to the terminal uh, and pick them up. There will be additional staff and volunteers greeting travelers and helping them find their way inside the airport and at the curb. Uh, extra staffing by the TSA has been arranged for. Um, uh, if you are uh, bringing food uh, or bringing gifts where you are traveling, the Transportation Security Administration suggests that food goes in checked luggage and that gifts be unwrapped in order to keep uh, wait times lower and move people through the security process. So in closing, uh, I want to thank all of you very much for coming. I want to wish uh, everyone in Massachusetts uh, safe travels, no matter how you are getting to uh, your destination, and a very happy and safe Thanksgiving. And now we're going to turn it over to some of my colleagues who will provide additional information. Thank you, Secretary. Not only will people be traveling on our roads and bridges this holiday season, but they will also be using buses, trains, and public transportation. Talk more about the MBTA schedule. We have Deputy Chief Operating Officer Todd Johnson and MBTA General Manager for Commuter Bus Service Jody Gray. Morning. Uh, so the MBTA has uh, begun preparation. Uh, we increased uh, on our heaviest uh, route, which is the transit way. Uh, the Silver Line SL1 that goes over to the airport, we see an increase in ridership that begins well before the holiday on Saturday. So beginning last Saturday, uh, we increased our service on the Silver Line at, uh, to a headway of every eight minutes. That service has stayed, uh, stays at that level right through uh, Monday, uh, the 28th, so that we can accommodate all of the customers that are coming back after the holiday uh, utilizing the uh, transit uh, Silver Line. Uh, we have also uh, planned to increase our midday uh, service on the rail lines on the red, orange, and blue line uh, beginning tomorrow uh, to accommodate any custom, uh, customers that will be traveling to and from uh, the airport or the commuter rail stations. We will have additional station personnel in our heaviest uh, travel stations, South Station, uh, Airport, just to uh, name a few. For the holiday itself, uh, the rail lines uh, and the bus service will be operating on a Sunday schedule. But on Friday, 
the red, orange, and blue line uh, will be back to a weekday schedule as well as the bus routes. Uh, the green line will be on a uh, Saturday schedule on Friday, but will also be uh, increasing and adding additional service during the uh, midday. Uh, we will have extra station personnel, as I mentioned, in the stations, as well as the MBTA Transit Police uh, will have additional offices in the heavy travel stations, such as uh, South Station, uh, to accommodate any customer needs. Uh, as always, we encourage our customers, uh, before they go out and travel, to check our website at mbta.com for any service alerts uh, or, or any issues that may be happening uh, throughout the system before they travel. Uh, and while they're traveling on the system, uh, you know, security and safety is, is paramount, and we, we just ask them uh, that if they see something, say something, uh, to notify a uniform employee so that we can address uh, any concerns that any of the customers have. Thank you. Morning on the commuter rail side. Um, on Wednesday afternoon, um, just afternoon time, we will bring the larger trains into uh, the terminals at North Station and South Station. Uh, typically, we see a, a large exodus of folks um, just after the noon time into the early afternoon. Uh, the larger train sets will be brought in, uh, so they won't be available in the later afternoon, but um, the full service will be provided. Um, we will have passenger assistance at both North Station and South Station to help people that don't really travel at those times to get to the right trains and understand what, what the adjustments might be. Thursday, uh, on the holiday, we will be running a Sunday schedule. Uh, the Sunday schedule is um, um, more than adequate to cover the expected ridership um, on, on that day. Friday, we go back to a normal schedule, um, so regular weekday schedule. Um, the larger sets that we had put out of sequence on, on Wednesday afternoon will be put back into the uh, appropriate locations for our remaining service for the weekend and especially for Monday uh, morning. Uh, in addition to that, on the um, ferry service, um, on Wednesday afternoon, we'll be providing um, extra two extra trips um, out of Rose Wharf, um, both at 12.30 and at 2.30 p.m. Um, and then additional service throughout the afternoon, we'll make additional stops um, whether it be at Logan Airport um, or we combine um, Hull and Hingham uh, service together so that uh, almost every trip will get you to where you need to go on that day. Um, the last train, uh, excuse me, the last ferry out of Long Wharf um, on Wednesday night is at 8.15 p.m. Um, and that will be, uh, that'll be it for that. At, at uh, Rose Wharf, uh, the last trip out is gonna be at 7 p.m. Um, and then we have some additional service coming into the city, but it's really the return of the boats. If people do need to get into the city, they can ride those boats as well. There'll be a um, last departure out of um, Hingham will be at, at 7.30 p.m. And the last departure, uh, excuse me, last departure out of Hingham will be at, at 7.30 p.m. There's also an additional trip at 6.10 uh, p.m. The Charlestown Inner Harbor Ferry Service um, will remain un unchanged. Uh, it's pretty robust as it is, um, 6.30 to 9, it's every 15 minutes, and then 9 to 3.30 p.m., it's every 30 minutes, and then for the afternoon rush, it goes back to 15 minutes, and then through 8 p.m., uh, every 30 minutes. The last departure from Long Wharf over to Charlestown is at 8 p.m., and the last departure from Charlestown to Long Wharf is at 8.15 Thank you, gentlemen. To reiterate the Secretary's points earlier, MassDOT strongly encourages drivers to monitor traffic tools and monitor real-time traffic information in order to make informed decisions this holiday season. To speak more about peak travel times and traffic values we can expect in our highway system, Jeff Morrison from the Executive Office of Highway Safety. Oh, Executive Office of Public Safety and Highway Division. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, I think one of the one of the most important things to keep in mind is that uh, safety is key. Uh, you do not want to start this holiday with a crash, injury, wreck. That would be a bad way to uh, start this young holiday. Um, so I want to talk about a couple of things: the, the worst times to travel, or the peak travel periods, and some numbers as well. And then talk a little bit about safety if we can. Um, AAA is estimating that there is going to be a 5.1% increase in vehicular travel during this season. That will be up from previous years. 
Um, 89% of the travel that's done over the Thanksgiving holiday will be done on the roads as opposed to rails or in the air. It's important because that means the crunch of travel is happening on our, the crunch of travel is happening on our roads. Uh, in terms of peak travel periods, um, in previous years, Wednesday has been the, uh, the busiest travel day. Over the last several years, we've noticed that Tuesdays have become much, much busier, so today is likely to be a much heavier than normal afternoon commute, so plan ahead for that if you can to try to get out early. Um, one of the things that we have found in the past as well on Wednesday, this is the Wednesday before, so tomorrow, is that the rush hour is going to begin early, uh, 1 or 2 o'clock. Uh, it will also likely end a little bit earlier than most rush hours do as well. So the advice if you're going to be traveling tomorrow on Wednesday, try to get your travel done in the morning, complete it before noon, um, and if you're trying to avoid congestion, uh, one trick you might think of is wait to ride it out until after the congestion eases after 5 or 6 o'clock. Traffic will most likely be significantly improved. Um, people tend to ignore the fact that there are delays, and a lot of people are traveling on Thanksgiving itself. So bear in mind that there's a possibility on Thanksgiving morning you'll run into congestion. Um, one of the areas historically where we have seen a lot of the backups, uh, not only on the days before, but on Thanksgiving itself, is on the turnpike at interchanges 84, 495, and 128. Uh, the great news this year is that we have open tolling, so those choke points that we have had in the past are most likely going to be significantly decrease. Um, the hope is, is that we'll see less congestion on the turnpike than we've seen in past years. Um, and finally, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, the importance of safety. To avoid crashes, don't rush. Put your phones away. Please wear your seatbelt. The most important tool that you have to avoid being hurt in a crash by other people who are doing things they shouldn't is by wearing that seatbelt. And please do not drink and drive or use any substance that will impair you while you're driving as well. Please have a safe and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Good morning. Um, as other speakers have noted, we expect high volume beginning today. We also expect high volume Friday and again over the weekend for people returning from their holiday travel. As with any holiday, Thanksgiving brings with it gatherings where alcohol is served. Anyone consuming alcohol is urged not to drive while impaired. We remind that even if you have consumed only a light amount of alcohol, your cognitive functions will be still be impaired and your response time will be slower than normal. As the saying goes, buzz driving is drunk driving. So please plan on having a designated sober driver. Staying over or using public transit if you are gathering where you will drink alcohol. Also, please refrain from texting, emailing, sharing photos, and any other activity on your phone while you're driving. There is nothing so important to read or post or share that cannot wait until you get home. Please keep your speeds down. Please remember that the posted speed limit is the maximum allowed under ideal conditions. The posted speed limit may not, in fact, be a proper and reasonable speed given weather conditions or other activity on the road ahead. We've already experienced a dose of bad weather this month. When we get more bad weather, and I hope it's not, it is a long time before we do so, but whenever we do, please remember that reasonable speeds for bad conditions are much lower than is posted. And we will enforce that. And finally, for some drivers traveling on the holiday, this may be the first time that you are on the mass pike since the automated tolling project got underway. Please be aware that traffic patterns at the old toll locations may have changed. Please be mindful of traffic flow speeds and check. Have a happy holiday, please. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Richard McEwen. Uh, with that, we're here to take your questions. And I'll... Any questions, folks? Um, can you just talk a little bit about the tradition that you're really trying to get people to change? I know that Tuesday has become 
sure people started leaving earlier from the state of Tennessee. What is a good rule of thumb today for trying to get in across the state? I think the most important thing is for people to check real-time traffic conditions if you have any flexibility. You know, a lot of people make their plans, the car's packed up, and they're leaving when they're leaving. But if you have the ability even to wait a couple hours, um, you know, the, the data that we've been looking at says that the rush hour will tail off, and so if you can wait and leave this evening, if you can wait and leave in the morning, those are the better time. But we really have a lot more tools than we used to have about traffic conditions in real time, whether it's the signs on the highway, websites, traffic cameras, and so if you can, find out where the congestion is and try to make your plans flexible enough so that you, instead of sitting in it, you can maybe work around it by changing your timing or changing your route. The uh, Turnpike Project and the Bentley for the full plazas in the center lane, Today was the deadline, or is the deadline? Is everything done to where you wanted so it? So actually, the last work from the first phase, while we allowed the contractors till today, it was all done by November 10th. So we're way ahead of schedule. Uh, you still see contractors out there because they've actually moved into the next phase of work. But the goal of the first phase of work was to open up lanes in the middle of the roadway that people can just stay in your lane and go through at a reasonable rate of speed. So. People should be able to use the turnpike. We don't know what to expect. It's obviously the first time we've used it, and, and there are still fewer lanes than there used to be when we had the toll plazas up. But we are hopeful that the kind of backups that we got from the toll plazas won't happen this year. Because some people, or a lot of people, actually use the turnpike for the holidays that don't use it regularly. Do you expect some confusion from those people as a sign? There room? may be some. So we've, you know, we've had a month now to adjust our signage and where we've gotten feedback that people are confused. We've tried to do that and we will be monitoring it on screens like this as well as at the actual locations. And if we're not doing a good job on signage, uh, we, will, we will change the signage. So yes, there will definitely be more people who have it. And as I've said, People who are going to be doing it and don't have a transponder, don't worry about it. Just go out there, use the turnpike, and you will get a bill based on your license plate. One more question, please. Anybody else? Secretary, uh, what is your biggest concern going to be? You know, our biggest concern is always safety. Um, it's, a, it's a great holiday. It's a family-oriented holiday. We want everybody to get where they're going and get back home again safely. And so the number one thing that we want everybody to do is leave themselves enough time and enough flexibility so that they can just take it easy, take it safely, put that cell phone aside, um, get where you're going safe, and let all the other folks on the road get where they're going and to share the holiday with their families safely. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.